the Salt series or From Software Salt likes or Saltsborne Kiro Ring games are very well known for some of the best boss fights in gaming. And while a lot of people agree with the top spots, I think there are a lot of underrated bosses in this series. And giving these few gems and underrated bosses a better spotlight and maybe more appreciation is the purpose of this video. I will be counting down my 10 most underrated bosses trying to keep it a bit varied and also give a few honorable mentions. I will take everything into account, ranging from lore to gameplay mechanics and trying to give these bosses a better rep than they have right now, because I think they genuinely deserve it. With all that out of the way, enjoy the video. Before getting to the meat of this list, I want to count down my honorable mentions. The Armor Spider from Demon Souls for being a really cool and unique gimmick boss fight. Duke's Dear Freya for having this cool torch mechanic, at least in Scholar of the First Sin, and just being very unique with the two sides. Rom, the vacuous spider from Bloodborne for being the boss that taught me patience and just having an awesome vibe and atmosphere. Mikolesh for being iconic to Bloodborne, being overall very interesting lore wise and honestly if you know what you do you can end him pretty quickly. Also dodging call beyond is just really satisfying and awesome. And last but not least to the flying dragons from Elden Ring, specifically Agil for having an awesome build up on my first run and overall just being a really fun fight on foot and on torrent as well. Playing as hybrid with and without torrent is just really fun in my opinion. But now let's get to the real list. The Fool's Idol might just be my favorite out of all the Demon Souls gimmick bosses. She has a really cool and unique clone mechanic that has three ways to counter it. Number one, or my preferred way, is locking on and seeing if she has a health bar. All the fake idols have health bars. Number two is watching the people, her simps, praying to her and they will always pray to the real one. And number three, a method that was even better in the OG Demon Souls, is just watching the projectiles because the real Fool's Idol shoots the strongest and biggest one. Ones. The great thing about this fight is that it's not over after you recognize the correct idol. Because every time after she teleports and repositions herself, she places invisible traps on the floor which disappear after a few seconds. So you have to memorize where they are. The benches are also unbreakable and thereby create this maze-like environment where you can't really know where you step in a trap. This forces you to think outside the box, maybe using ranged options or something to reach her if you didn't memorize the traps. Or just to try your luck and run through it but be careful if they catch you in the middle of the room and all of them bombard you you will not survive especially not on new game plus this is a really great and awesome ending to probably my favorite area in the game but before you do this fight please don't forget to kill this guy even though he tries to persuade you he's innocent i am but a humble servant i do not wish to interfere i won't cause you trouble i won't no, don't trust him at all. Just kill him. On my first run I, I didn't do it and he resummoned the fool's idol and I was just wondering what the hell I'm supposed to do. I love this mechanic. It's so unique and cool. I wish FromSoft tried something like this again. Basically a boss being revived if you didn't do some prerequisite. I don't know. Great boss. The four kings are a one of a kind battle in the Soul series. To even enter their dangerous arena, lying in the deep abyss, you need to equip a special ring you acquire from fighting Sith. If you don't do that, you will just die instantly. The arena is probably one of the most unique in the entire series. It's only a huge gigantic black room and you easily can lose track of the room and your perception might be fooled easily. The boss fight consists of four kings with pretty simple to dodge attacks, but they are on a timer. If you fail to kill one king, quickly enough another will spawn and they can gank you up to 4. So you really need to get your DPS up to succeed. I like this fight because of its special nature and because it's really fun to dodge their attacks if you don't just decide to hevel tank it. In my opinion it's one of the better parts of Dark Souls very controversial second half. But New London Ruins and the Four Kings are definitely one of the highlights in there. Their lore is also really cool and significant to the game and they have a pretty memorable OST. Pretty fun boss in my opinion. And I only really started to appreciate 
appreciated when I was doing a challenge run. It's pretty good, I like it. The Amygdala is one of the most iconic creatures in Bloodborne, and the moment it's revealed that there are everywhere in Yharnam is one of my favorites in the whole game. But not only is it a great world building piece in the city of Yharnam, it's also a great boss fight in the Nightmare Frontier. This boss fight is scaled for mid game and not late game, and I think it's underrated because most people fight it when they are over leveled and just stomp her. If you however fight her and you're actually at your supposed level, you will get one of the most fun bosses in the main game of Bloodborne. This fight puts a big emphasis on spacing and positioning. The most effective way to fight her is just being under her, but you will miss a lot of cool attacks and cinematic moments she does if you stand in front of her, so I prefer to fight her that way. She has this very cool moment where she rips two of her arms off and fights with them. She does it better than a certain other boss. <coughs> anyway, besides that she has a lot of just very cool looking moves with her weird teleporting vortexes she uses to take you to other worlds like the hunter's nightmare and she has two variations of the laser attack in phase three she starts to spam mini lasers and you need to reposition yourself and she has this cool laser beam she also uses in yahar ghoul as an environmental danger overall just a very fun boss in my opinion and just very underrated i think she deserves way more praise it's around eight tier for me very good I'm genuinely puzzled why this boss is not liked more. My only explanation is that he's overshadowed by three incredible bosses in the same DLC, but I still think this boss got done dirty by the community. Lawrence is one of the best beast bosses from software has ever designed. Phase 1 is basically just cleric beast with some fiery effects, but around 85% health he goes into phase 2 and now a lot of his moves are recontextualized and have new follow-ups. There also exist a lot of new moves now. This fight also adds phase 3 where he loses his legs, crawls around, leaving lava, forcing you to position well and also has some insanely delayed and tight attacks. So mechanically this boss is just really really fun and I love fighting him. BL4 made me love him even more. One thing I kind of agree but also disagree is the design. I think I would prefer him having a unique beast design. However, the fiery effects are one of the best things about his character. Lawrence is one of the most important people in the lore, if not the most important, and he's this ambitious, arrogant scholar from Bergenworth school. And well, yeah, Lawrence didn't fear the blood. And because of that, he started the Scourge of Beasts in Yarnum. And as a punishment, he gets turned into a a cleric beast burning in eternal anguish in the hunter's nightmare which is just an insanely awesome ending to his character if you ask me also i just need to mention his soundtrack it's my second favorite boss music in the series and in general soundtrack in the series and one of my favorite pieces of music of all time it's incredible here are some highlights It's just amazing. Lawrence is a really, really great boss and I genuinely don't understand why he's not liked as much. I think he's one of the most overhated bosses I've ever seen. Also, this demo takes is just the worst take I've ever seen, probably. Oh. Oh. Right. Um, anyways, Lawrence is amazing, guys. Please maybe reconsider Lawrence, maybe refight him, maybe think about him. He's awesome. S tier. Underrated boss, maybe the most underrated in the whole series.
The old Demon King is a good boss caught between some of the best moments in the Dark Souls main game. He comes right after the Abyss Watchers and right before Irifil of the Boreal Valley, which is one of the most beloved Dark Souls 3 areas. I think that's one of the main reasons why he's so forgotten. But I have to be honest, the area really grew on me over time and so did the old Demon King. I used to really think he's just alright or he exists, but he's actually pretty good. He has a really fun moveset and really fun fire attacks to dodge and I also really enjoy dodging his big maze and overall just enjoy most of his moveset. This one spit I do not enjoy, I think it's a pretty annoying attack. Besides that, this is a very lore heavy fight. The old Demon King collapsing, just like the Demon Society in general. They are at the end of their glory days. They're all dying out, it's really sad to be honest. And the old Demon King collapsing at the end of the fight, not even being able to fight you to the bitter end is just really really sad and I feel really bad for him. The soundtrack is also really good and really grew on me and I especially love this one, Bed of K related part. Really cool reference if you ask me. This is just a good boss in my opinion. It's not great, it's not amazing, but it's a good boss and I think it deserves a lot more praise than it gets. He's a good boss. Good job old Demon King, you deserve better. If I have a guilty pleasure in the Soul series, Osiris is just that. Because I honestly can understand if you dislike this boss. He can be really annoying for challenge runs and this instant charge attack is genuinely pretty terrible. However, you can definitely deal with it if you position correctly and stand behind him, but if you just stand in front of him and he does it instantly without any indications, it's really bad and bullshit. However, I think besides that, the fight is really really fun and awesome. Phase 1 is a nice little teaser and very interesting as a build-up and he's I think the only boss in Dark Souls 3 that talks mid-fight besides Ariandel so it's really awesome in that sense but I don't really enjoy it that much and I also find it somehow harder than phase 2 because it has some really weird timings and aggression levels. When he squashes the baby Ocelot in phase 2 and starts running around, he's a really fun fight. I just really enjoy the fight. I love the spinning move where you have to dodge in it in a precise timing. I enjoy his magic attacks and I even grew to kind of like the charge but I still think it's a bad attack if you look at it objectively. Besides that, Osiris has one of the most underrated soundtracks in the series if you ask me and one of my favorites from Dark Souls 3. Genuinely don't understand why it's not talked about more, especially phase 2. I adore the soundtrack. The voice acting is also just superb and really iconic At least Osiris was used in some memes, which is still a win in my book. The lore is also just really interesting, Osiris diving into Sif's secrets, it's really cool. I think Osiris is a great boss personally, but I honestly can kind of understand why some would dislike him, especially if you're doing some kind of no-hit challenge runs and stuff like that. But besides that, pretty great boss.
I have talked about this boss in much more detail in my full Sekiro boss ranking, and I think most people like this boss. However, unfortunately, this version of Ishin lives in the shadow of the Sword Saint, and I kind of understand it, but I still think the Shura ending boss, Emma and Ishin, deserves to stand in Sekiro's best boss lineup. It's actually a very sad ending and fight, first fighting Emma, your trustworthy companion through your entire journey, and then one of the most badass character moments in FromSoft history happens, when Ishin just crawls out of his deathbed and kicks your ass. It's literally one of the coolest moments in the series and I think Ishin Ashina is one of the most respectable characters because he's basically a dead man and still is so powerful. It's absolutely insane. Besides that, it's just a very very fun fight. Emma has some moves that prepare you for phase 2 which is amazing boss design and phase 2 and phase 3 especially are just really great. I love Ishin's dodge move. It's one of my favorite moves in Sekiro. Actually, I kind of wish the inner sword Saint Ishin would receive this dodge because I think it would fit the fight very well. Besides that, here's some really cinematic attacks in phase 2 and overall a really fun fight. But as I said, I already talked about him plenty in my Sekiro video. So if you want more, maybe check that out. Great boss. I think while it gets quite a bit of praise, I think it deserves even more of it. It's genuinely great. I really can't say too much about the full grown falling star beast. I think it has an amazing and incredible design. I love the lore that it's basically like a larva form or a form of Astel before it's full grown adult. And I also really think the theme is unique and quite memorable. Besides that, it all comes down to just being a really really good boss. It's an insanely well designed mini boss and it probably has a more complex moveset than any Dark Souls 1 boss. I just really enjoy it. I love its gravitational attacks, some of them are just really really cinematic mind you this is a mini boss this is just a mini boss you fight on your way to volcano manor it's absolutely mind-blowing that they casually just put this incredible boss up here i love how it delays some of its attacks i love how dynamic the fight feels the moves are all fun to dodge and i really really enjoy that the stance breaks are really rewarding in this fight if you manage to break this beast's really tough posture you will be rewarded greatly because it stays down for very long and you can get a lot of attacks in overall just an amazing mini boss and one of the best ones and i think this boss just needs to be talked about much more because it's insanely impressive how much fromsoft has improved at making bosses over the years Not straying away from creatures from space invading the lands between, we have Estelle, Natural Born of the Void, and the Stars of Darkness. Probably has my second favorite design in the game, it looks absolutely incredible and it's up there with some of Bloodborne's best. Besides that, it's just really really fun to fight and engage with in combat. I really enjoy dodging its cool cosmic attacks, they all look amazing. Some of the moves are straight up really cinematic, like the Meteor Shower, and I also really enjoy the grab attack. It's really really tight and it always feels amazing to dodge. I also really enjoy that they brought back the hitting the head as a weak spot mechanic and I wish they used it with a few bosses like for the sex. It just works really well and you can actually enjoy the huge boss and seeing all the attacks so they definitely mastered that with Medir. The soundtrack is not one of the best in Eldering but it still fits the fight perfectly and the arena looks amazing. I personally also don't really mind the stars of darkness existing because it fits the lore and it looks amazing plus it expands the moveset with the additional grab attack which is just one of the coolest looking attacks in the game to be honest. It's not like the Stars of Darkness as version is Godifroy or something. Godifroy is a really weird addition if you ask me but whatever. So yeah Astell is really fun and I feel like he's not talked about much because he's overshadowed by a lot of incredible bosses in Elden Ring and some people don't find him that memorable but I think he really is and I think he really deserves a lot more recognition.
This boss is just very special, not only in Elden Ring, but in the From Software series in general. It doesn't even feel like a boss fight, it's more like a moment. You witness this regal creature walking here and it looks majestically and beautifully at first, but if you take a closer look, it's decaying and rotting and it looks really gross. It has once again a really good design, but that's given with From Software at this point. The fight is also really good if you don't kill him in a few seconds, which unfortunately happens because of his placement in the game. Game, but if you actually get to enjoy the fight, it's super fun. He has three kinds of spirit boost attacks he gains from siphoning the spirit animals around the arena. He has this charge, the jump attack and the roll, which a lot of people dislike, but I actually really, really like. Overall, the fight is just fun. Besides that, he has probably one of the most unique soundtracks in From Software history. I absolutely love the composition and it's just an absolute standout track, probably top 10 in Elden Ring. It's really good. I have to say, this is the only only boss reuse in the game that I actually really dislike. The first ancestor spirit shouldn't have existed. I think this should be your one and only encounter with this boss because it takes quite a bit away from him and makes him less special. But besides that I have basically no issues. It's a really memorable encounter for me and I really just grew to like it more and more by each playthrough. Well, we are at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching it and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have some other underrated bosses you might think I missed, please let me know in the comments. I love discussing bosses. Besides that, thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. It helps out the channel massively and there is a ton more coming in the future. I appreciate every one of you watching and supporting and I hope you will also be here next time for whatever kind of video I will be presenting you. With that said, have a nice day and bye!